Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Five Chianti Classicos, uh, two vintages, one glass, one taster, one spittoon. Let's get into them. First one, uh, this is Tesco's own label, uh, 2010 vin vintage, uh, bottled by SI3537, whoever that is. Let's give it a whirl. Interesting. This uh, it's like there's uh, well, what I'm looking for in Chianti. It's got it's got quite a bit, it's quite a bit of plummy weight, uh, but uh, balanced against that, there's a cherry freshness. How can you get the two reconciled? Well, let's taste it and see whether they do reconcile. And that's good chewy Wednesday evening wine. Not amazing concentration. Uh, not afraid to be uh, have its acidity and tannin, uh, but uh, just the perfect thing to bite against. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so it's something that, that, that that's got quite a bit of protein in there. Maybe I'll have it with some hard cheeses or a or a steak, but uh, maybe sausages if it's Wednesday night. Um, uh, not amazingly complex, but um, yeah, good Wednesday night glug. Let's try the next one. Uh, so this is again 2010 vintage. Uh, this is Castellari uh, 2010. Well, I've just checked the alcohol on the first one. Uh, can't believe that these two are both the same uh, level. This one smells like it's going to have a lot more plummy plushness, um, and um, maybe there's, uh, it's more on maybe again more on that plums and the, the dark berries and black currants, uh, and the cherry is just lurking in the background. Feels like it's going to be a heartier, throatier wine. Um, so maybe I'm instead of if the first one's the Wednesday night wine, this maybe is the um, is the weekend wine. And I think it's got roughly similar levels of tannin and acidity, but um, it's got more flesh on those bones, uh, so you don't notice them as much. But you do notice the, um, uh, yeah, there's a touch of vanilla in there. I don't know whether that's from oak or whether it's from uh, uh, something that's, uh, that's, uh, that's in the grapes in the first place. Um, and there's a freshness about it, there's this plums, and then these cherries do kick in, and it's more the cherry kernel, uh, and it's dark cherries as well. Um, a tasty wine, for me a big step up, not that I didn't like the first one. I like that. Tasty wine. Uh, right, wine number three. Uh, this is San Felice um, Chianti Classico 2009. Let's give it a whirl. Well, it's a year older, but it actually smells of quite a bit more mature than that. Um, there's um, uh, the cherries. Uh, there's some of the that, that cherry kernel as well. Uh, maybe a touch of cola too. Uh, it smells like it's not going to be as full-bodied as the uh, second one, but slightly fuller than the first one. What's well, an interesting one that one? Um, that I get that cola, the cherries. Uh, there is a touch of Britannomyces I, I find in there, adding a little bit of, uh, of funkiness and maybe some meatiness. And then there are some more interesting things that lurk in the background. Uh, things like herbs, uh, a bit of spice as well. And almost makes me think that uh, I wouldn't be surprised to. Um, I don't know. I, I, it feels at the moment like there's, uh, there's there's maybe three years difference between these the the the, the Castellari 2010 and this 2009. Wouldn't be surprised if like in in a few hours uh, the Castellari not looking older uh, or tired by any means, but um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this one sort of suddenly uh, came into its own. I'll report back on that one. Not as good as a Castellari for me, but um, as I say, I will report back. One number four, um, Poggerino. Uh, I never know whether it's Poggerino, I, I, Poggerino or Poggerino. I'm going to call it Poggerino. Poggerino 2009 Chianti Classico. And this feels light and charming. Almost um, some uh, once upon a time, actually not too long ago, but uh, in the um, late 80s and 90s, uh, it seemed like Chianti Classico wanted to try and um, ape Bordeaux. Now uh, they, there are quite a few wines which, uh, thanks to the way in which the wines are being make, made, thanks to the way in which uh, people have sorted out which clones of Sangiovese grow uh, uh, best on which soils. Uh, there's almost like a Burgundian type of fragrance and earthiness that's coming through in the wine. And I get that uh, slight delicacy, more, more Burgundian delicacy here. Maybe the Castellari is more in the Bordeaux mould. Here, yes, a nice fragrant, uh, gentle, there's a juicy cherry character, uh, maybe a few other red berries in there, uh, but um, undercurrents of earthiness. Yum, yum, yum. Um, yes, there's a, um, it has the effortless allure of, um, of, of great wine. It's not trying to um, smack you around the head and say, look at me. It just says, here I am, what do you think? And I think, thumbs up. 
Uh, so there's the juiciness, there's the earthiness, there's a real, as I, I, I suspected, a real sense of place. It's probably the palest of the wines so far, uh, but in terms of depth of flavour and um, interest of flavour, um, it's, it's, it's my favourite. The Castellari was maybe a bit louder, maybe they polished it just that little bit too much, but uh, uh, both of those, for me, uh, step above the other two so far. Hey, I like it. Uh, wine number five to finish with. This is uh, Barone Ricasole, uh, Chianti Classico, so Reserva, uh, Rocca Giccia, Gicciada, uh, 2009 vintage. Interesting, this one. I think that, that there is a little bit of uh, Cabernet and Merlot in with the Sangiovese. I'm not sure of the blends for the, for the other four. Sangiovese will be the main grape throughout. I think you're supposed to have 85% for Chianti Classico. Um, but here, I think that there's maybe 10%. 12% made up of, uh, of Merlot and Cabernet, uh, but um, it feels, it's, it's that, uh, that, that uh, cherry kernel and uh, spicy earthiness of Sangiovese that's, uh, that's carrying it. Uh, it feels like it's quite a plush wine, uh, probably um, in has some things in common with the Castellari. And um, maybe if the, uh, those Bordeaux grapes are making their presence felt, there's a slight greenness at the, at the back, uh, that herbal character that you get, in, uh, you get from Cabernet, and uh, that for me is not a fault it's actually an attribute but you get on to is this authentic uh, uh, Tuscan wine and uh, I don't want to get bogged down in that uh, that debate uh, it's, it's, for me start off as do you like it and then is it authentic and uh, lots of other things lots of other things in the equation maybe I'll shut up and taste it and you could describe it as international if you were being uh, really really hard on it uh, there's some of that green uh, some of those, those, those more berry and black currant characters of, uh, of the Bordeaux grapes do come through. But it's this really nice, juicy, cherryish Sangiovese uh, and uh, that earthy uh, bit of cola. I get cola in, in, in quite a lot of Sangioveses. That's, uh, that, that's, that, that's really the main event. Those Bordeaux grapes just adding uh, a little bit of... Uh, uh, polish is maybe the wrong word, but uh, yeah, a few extra attributes. Is it authentic Chianti Classico? Who cares? It's pretty tasty wine. I I still think I prefer the the uh, the Poggerino, but um, nice set of five wines. I'll um, I, I think I'll be setting into the Poggerino first th th this evening, but um, I've got four other wines to fall back on if that lets me down. See you soon.